Welcome, 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 and warm greetings from All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. My name is Claudius. And today we wind up on righteousness by reflecting on the cost thereby. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for another wonderful day that you have made for us. We ask that, Lord, you will continue to bless us as we meditate in your word. Continue to refresh, renew, correct, teach, rebuke us, and train us and prepare us in all righteousness to the glory and praise of your holy name. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So what have we learned so far on righteousness from God? We began by saying that righteousness is granted, not earned. And then yesterday we said that it comes through faith alone, in Jesus alone. And these two aspects give us a right standing before God. God justifies us freely. But is this righteousness free? That is what we explore today. Because many a times, sometimes, we want to feel like we paid for something to be able to enjoy its fruit. But not so with this righteousness from God. On our part, it cost us nothing. We just need to receive it by faith. But we will see its actual cost thereof. From verse 25, we read, God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time. This was Paul's time and even our time today. So us to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Okay, so we have a sacrifice for atonement. Then the justice of God and sins that were unpunished. We know that the sacrifice of bulls and goats in the past was pointing to the perfect sacrifice of Jesus who was to come. The justice of God means that sin must be atoned for. It cannot go unpunished because God is holy. He cannot have anything to do with anything that is not in keeping with his nature, character, or his being. So sin was committed against God. So notice this. Only a divine payment would appease a divine being. Are you seeing our wretched state then as human beings who sinned against God? There was nothing in any way that we could do for our own atonement. And that is why also the blood of bulls and goats and any sacrifice thereof could not and even cannot, even today, if it was given, cannot please God and make anyone right before God. So God in his wisdom sent his son, the God-man, fully representing man and fully God to be the efficacious sacrifice that atones for the sin of those who would believe in him, the Lord Jesus. Jesus, being infinite, could atone for an infinite number of sins. And him, being sinless, became an appropriate sacrifice for sin before God. That is why faith in Jesus 
blot out your past, present sins, and even future ones. And through confession, renews you constantly by his one-time shed blood. Therefore, for believers, the righteousness from God is free, but to Jesus it cost him his life. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And today, we enjoy salvation on the basis of the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. God paid the debt of sin for which man could not pay with his own son. If you believe you are justified before God, he counts you as righteous by the merit of Jesus alone. We say salvation is free because Jesus paid the debt for us. So we don't give him our lives, but rather we receive him. We receive from him the free gift of salvation. And even when we are coming to him, we shall see it is a gift from him that enables us to come and receive him through faith. Because it is something which he already purchased for us before God. And so when we put our faith and trust in him alone, then we appropriate or we receive that which he had gotten for us. So righteousness from God, free to believers, but costly to Jesus. That is our takeaway lesson today. It cost Jesus his life to set those who believe free from their sins. I wonder, when was the last time you were thankful to Jesus for saving you? And what may be delaying you from taking hold of this life, which has freely been offered by Jesus? You know, the clock is ticking. Every second is counting. It may not always be waiting for you to make the right decision. I pray that you would make the right decision today, now. Tomorrow, we begin meditation on faith as we explore how God justifies us through it. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for the gift and blessing of our, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May you give us the confidence and the faith of receiving him into our hearts and into our lives, that he may transform us and make us into what he desires us to be for his own glory. This is our humble prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen.